Hi, I'm Phil Brock. This is Brock and your block, and today I'm in a deli that all of you know in the city of Santa Monica. We'll find out more in a moment. Anyone need some matzo, some matzo ball soup, some fish? We're there. Well, I'm standing. Where am I standing? You're here at Izzy's Deli in Santa Monica on Washington 15th Street, and I am the owner, Izzy Freeman. Izzy Freeman. You know, I've been in your restaurant many times, have met you once or twice in passing, and I always think that you came, your predecessor was another deli in San Mike. You said that's not true, you had nothing to do with Zuki's. Nothing at all. Zuki's was on 5th and Washer, we were on 15th and Washer. We decided that Santa Monica needed another deli. We opened up here 43 years ago, 24-7. Haven't closed this restaurant. And how long? 43 years, 24-7. So there's no locks on the door. People are always welcome here. The only time we close this restaurant is once in a while maintenance. And we have to keep the doors closed. So we have a busboy put his car on the sidewalk to block the door. Because people don't read signs that are closed. So, you know, my, the first place I ever ate growing up, my parents and grandparents told me, was Zuki's, your predecessor. Right. And I understand that I spilled so many saltine crackers on the floor, I wasn't allowed back for a few years. Now, you don't have the saltine cracker rule here, do you? So I can still come in and eat. You can still come and eat. We have some customers that will order a matzo ball soup and use two, three, four, five, six, eight packages of saltines, like a mishmash soup. Ah. And that's the way it goes. You so, know? you've kept this open for 43 years. That's an accomplishment. I had read an article a couple of weeks ago in Los Angeles that said Santa Monica was one of the most challenging restaurant environments in the country. And the restaurants were having a real problem staying open and surviving in Santa Monica. What's your secret? My secret is that we've been here so long, we've learned how to work the system, and uh, if I was to open up a restaurant today, it wouldn't be in Santa Monica. I probably wouldn't open it any place today because with the minimum wage laws, with the insurance laws, with all the problems that go along with health department problems or with all the new regulations, it's almost impossible to make it in the restaurant business today. And, ones who do make it are just fortunate and they just, after so many years, we figured out a, a way to do it. Plus, I have a very good lease here, which makes a big difference. And I, I know from talking to people throughout Santa Monica that you have many, many loyal customers. Uh, celebrities, non-celebrities, I'm upset because I don't have anything named for me on the menu. I'll have to come here more often. But here's what I, I you know, it's interesting always to me that restaurants survive not on the person who comes once, but repeat business. Well, we have customers that come in here almost every day. They sit with the same server, and some of them are elderly people. They'll come in every day, every day, and then all of a sudden one day they come by themselves. And then I have to ask, how's your husband, how's your wife? How you passed away? It breaks our heart because we've been here so long, and we've seen these people, and they always want the same server all the time. And I have servers that have been here. I have one server that's been here 43 years. She came the day after I opened up. On Monday we opened up, she came on Tuesday. I have some employees been here for 35 years, 25 years. I have second generation working here. Second generation working here that the, the, the father started here, now the sons are, are, are working here. What did you do before opening this restaurant on Wilshire Boulevard. I had an international house of pancakes in Beverly Hills on the Olympic and the Pier, and I am a member of the City Hope Board of Directors, and one meeting, I was at a meeting, and Mr. Auerbach, who owns this property, he's passed away now, but he became a very good friend, he said, would you like to open up a deli in Santa Monica? And I said, sure. I didn't even know where Santa Monica was, except that I went to POP when I was a kid, mm -hmm. so, we came here, and this was a, lo a linoleum store and a dental laboratory, and we renovated it, took it apart, built a restaurant, took it about a year to do it right, and we opened up in 1973, August 20th, and the rest is history. Did you grow up in LA? I grew up in New York, in Brooklyn. You, you can't hear my accent? Yeah, no, I, can I mean, hear, come on, give me a break. I mean, yeah. you know. How old were you when you moved here? I, I was going on 14. 
but my wife wouldn't let me speak to my daughter when she was learning to talk because she didn't want to have an accent like mine. <laughs> so, so that, that, right. that. I'm really involved in charity. I'm president-elect of the Kiwanis Club. I was involved with the Boys and Girls Club for decades here. I have helped almost every charity, and you touched a, uh, a nerve with me in a good way a minute ago when you said City of Hope. And, you know, the Kiwanis Club, we're going to make baskets for the Children's Hospital. We do things for charities all over Santa Monica, but you're on the board of City of Hope? On the national board, yes. Now I'm emeritus, but I was on the board since 1976. What did it give to you, not to others, but give to you by being involved in a charity? Can I tell a little story first? Most times when you're helping people that are sick and you hear stories how the city hope done bone marrow transplants and they did this, they did that, you know, and they felt, well, my daughter, my, my older daughter came to me once and said, Dad, my very good friend's father needs a stem cell transplant. He can't get it done because his cancer is so far along. What could you do? So I called Dr. Foreman, who's the father of transplants, and I told him the story. He said, let me see the patient. And he did, and he did me a favor. He accepted the patient. And a few months later, at school, they had these programs, you know, for the holidays, the girls, they, they sing and they dance, mm -hmm. and, and afterwards you go and you have lemonade and cookies, and I was standing up, and there's a guy in the background wearing a baseball cap and our eyes caught. I, 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 I'm going to choke up. And this is many years ago and, and he comes up to me and says, are you Heidi's father? I said, yes. I'm his. He said to me, I just want to thank you. All I wanted to do was to be here tonight to see my daughter perform and a few weeks afterwards he passed away. But like I said, to put a face for all the people you help, I mean, you, you help a lot of Kiwanis because I, I used to be in the Kiwanis when I was in high school where, I, you know, I went to the Kiwanis right. Club and we help people. We never see their faces. Once in a while you see a face that you help. You know, I mean, makes, yeah. makes such a difference. I mean, that's it. That's, I started that, my careers, I started my first career was as a teacher and to see my ex-students come along and, and see them prosper. The best feeling in the world, especially when they send you a note 30, 40 years later saying that you helped them. You've just made a friend because I didn't know that you were involved in charities. Uh, well, yeah, to me, big time. that is the purpose of everything we do in life as we become successful. It's our obligation to give back, to help others, to give others a hand up in life. So important. Now you told me you had a story. Yeah, I have a about story that, someone that, here. You know, we've been here a long time. Mm -hmm. Our employees are here for a long time. We have one employee here who, who could be the best waiter in the United States. I mean, just one of those kind of waiters. And he came here at 16, and I don't think he had any papers. Now he's in his 40s. Came here, didn't speak a word of English. We, we saw he was a good, clean kid. We worked with him. He asked me to go to school to learn English, and he did. He, he, he was a busboy. He got a green card. He got his papers. Became a citizen. Now he works as a waiter. He has two sons. He owns a home. He drives a BMW. Both his kids went to Santa Monica City College. I mean, what's there? What's, what? The, I mean, you talk about immigration. There are people out there that really want to work and really support. The community and support their families and and we need to really think about that I mean we, we only hear about I mean I, I know you're a newspaper guy but you only hear bad news you only hear that the, the illegal that killed somebody you don't hear the good stories I mean I guarantee you there are more good stories than there are bad stories but that we never hear you've had this restaurant now for we heard 43 years what how long will Izzy stay open and how long are you going to still be thrilled about coming into your restaurant every day and talking to customers and making sure the waiters and you the know, cooks and the food is good? It's funny you ask me that question because that's crossed my mind a lot lately. I'm 77 years old. I'm 
pretty good shape. I exercise yeah. all the time. I've, and you just lost 18 pounds. And I, and I have uh, a young I, need, I, I have a young wife. That, and I need to lose the 18 <laughs> no, pounds. No, no, Boy, do I, I need to lose I, it. I, I, like I said, I have a young wife. She, she keeps me young. And every time in my mind, I say, you know, maybe it's time to be tired. Maybe it's time just to travel the world or whatever. But these employees are my family now. My family. I mean, if I sold the place, somebody's going to completely destroy 43 years of relationships with employees and with customers. I say, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I probably would die here. You know, I have my lease. To 2033, that's another 13, 14 so years. So I expect that I, I, I'll be, be here. close 90 years. So I'll probably be here for that, you know. And, and uh, they may have to wheel me in, in a wheelchair, but I'll be here, you know. In Santa Monica, you know, 43 years doesn't normally sound like a long time, but when our oldest hardware store, 94 years old, is uh, in danger of closing. When restaurants in Santa Monica, oldest restaurant now dates back to 1934. But you know, as much as we all like the new and the fresh, there's room for our history. There's room for those places where you come in every day and people know you and you're appreciated. And you have the comfort of having a menu and food that you like. And Izzy, you're doing that here at Izzy's Deli. So thank you very much for all of Santa Monica that you're taking the time and you're working here. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure talking with you and I want you to be a friend too. Okay. Thank you. We, we, we have a slogan on, on our menu, right on the front cover it says, where customers become family. That's on our menu. I like that. This has been another great Brock in your block. It was great being at Izzy's Deli here in Santa Monica. We'll see you again next time.